My name is Eli El Makas, and I'm going to tell you the story of Menachem and his brother Fred. While we are making this film in 2018, I'm 17 years old. I've been living in Sinsheim since I was 14, and I'm enrolled in a TSG academy in Hoffenheim, one of the most prestigious in Germany. I study, I play football for the youth team of TSG Hoffenheim, I make friends. I play football. I hang out with my dad, who lives here. I study a bit more. I play football. And football. And when I have some time off, I... Okay, you get it. I also come from Israel. That's where I was born and spent my childhood. Growing up among a lot of Jews, that's normal for me. But once I came to Hoffenheim, I realized there aren't any Jews here. In school, I learned what happened to the Jews in Germany. And my teacher, Mr. Heitz, he took me around Hoffenheim and showed me where people like Manfred and Heitz Meyer and the 16 other Jews he all lived. He also told me what happened to the Jews of Hoffenheim. It was awful. Some people say it cannot really be understood. But it can be remembered. And if there is one word I can teach you in Hebrew, it's a word that has to do with the story. Zachor, remember. Karl Mayer was born in 1894 and he was from a family of cattle dealers who lived in Hoffenheim. Something Jews in rural Germany did quite well back then. You see, Jews were very integrated into society in most of Germany, especially in smaller towns, or at least they thought they were. When the First World War began in 1914, Karl May served his fatherland and fought in the German army. He was captured by the British and after the war was a wooden and iron cross. After the war, Karl continued as a cattle handler and he met Mathilde Wertheimer, Hilde, who came from a small village nearby, Neidenstein. They married in 1927 and their first son, Manfred, was born in 1929 and Heitz was born in 1932. They grew up on Neue Straße and this is what it looked like. And yes, they lived in an apartment in the synagogue which could hold all the Jews of Hoffenheim and there weren't very many of them. Starting in 1933, after the Nazis came to power in Germany, things got much worse for the Jews here. Jews were spit on and beaten, they were excluded from social life, and they weren't allowed to work for the state. In 1937, the Maras decided to send Manfred to the Jewish school in Heidelberg, because other boys in school were beating him up. Then came that night in November, 1938, Reichspogromnacht, when members of the SA 
men who had been their neighbors, came into the synagogue and started destroying it. And when that wasn't enough, they broke into Damar's apartment and threw furniture, dishes, everything onto the pavement. Suddenly, Damar's were homeless and they had to live with relatives. All over the German Reich, synagogues were burned. Thousands of Jewish men were taken to concentration camps. Karl Mayer and other Jewish men were taken away by the SA and deported to Dachau for several weeks. And he came back a very shaken man. By then, all the Jewish children were banned from the primary school in Hoffenheim. So Heinz and Manfred woke up every day before 5 o'clock, walked to the train station and took the train to Heidelberg. Manfred and Heinz continued on, making the trip to Heidelberg until Tuesday, 22nd October 1940. That was the day that all the Jews of the Baden and the Palatinate, all 6,551 of them, had to leave their homes within an hour. They were brought by trucks to Heidelberg, Mannheim, Karlsruhe, and Freiburg. And what did Karl Mayer, highly decorated soldier of World War I, do before being deported from his fatherland? He took his Iron Cross threw it on the floor and yelled, this is what I fought for during the war. These very first deportations from Germany went here, to Gross, in Vichy, France. Gross was not a concentration camp like Dachau. It was an internment camp that had been built for refugees from a Spanish civil war. But it was still an awful place. Conditions were miserable. The Maya family suffered a terrible winter. There was no school for the boys, they slept on concrete, and there was hardly anything to eat. The boys stayed in Gross for four months, until in February 1941, the parents sent them to a French orphanage. Along with 48 other children, they came to Aspe, a hundred kilometer away. Here, everything was taught in French. For a while, the boys could finally go to school again. The boys from Germany remained in Aspe until February 1943, when they were hidden in an orphanage in Toulouse. But soon after they arrived, Manfred, who was by then 14 years old, was taken by a group from the French Jewish underground. And Manfred will remain in hiding with other boys in France. Leaving Heinz, 11 years old, alone. Heinz remained in Toulouse until May 1944 and late one night he and some other children were smuggled over the mountains into Switzerland. Heinz was taken from one orthodox Jewish home for boys after another and he became very religious. But what happened to their parents, Colin and Hilde? In 1941, the German Jews in Gross were taken to another camp, Camp de Rivesal. Another internment camp. More misery. They sent their son's letters until 10th August 1942, when they sent this last letter. Meine lieben Kinder, will euch schnell vor der Abreise einige Zeilen schreiben. Habe gestern Abend den großen Schließkorb mit viel Wäsche an euch abgesandt, da wir jetzt abreisen und dürfen nur Handgepäck mitnehmen. Wenn ihr nach Amerika kommt, so seht zu, dass ihr was mitnehmt davon. Vielleicht kommen wir mit Gottes Hilfe auch noch dorthin. Weiß nicht, ob wir euch schreiben können, vielleicht durchs Rote Kreuz. Bleibt brav und gesund, eure euch liebende Mutter. On 10th August 1942, Karl and Hilde Meyer were taken by train to Tronzi along with 2,300 other Jews. And from there, they were taken on a train that would bring them 
here. The Soviets liberated the prisoners from Auschwitz on January 27, 1945, but of those who were still alive, the Maras were not among them. In 1946, Manfred had found Heinz in Engelberg in Switzerland. And because they had already met Jews who were coming back from the camps, they knew in their hearts they would never see their parents again. Heinz dealt with his pain by remaining religious. But Manfred simply said, God is dead. A month later, Manfred received an affidavit to come to America, and Heitz remained in Switzerland. In May 1948, Heinz learned that the State of Israel was founded. For a teenager who had just spent the most miserable childhood imaginable, who no longer had home, no family to go back to, Heitzmann said goodbye to Europe and arrived in Israel in September 1948. Where he gave himself his Jewish name, he will no longer use the name Heinz. Now he was Menachem. And at the age of 16, life could begin. In 1950, Menachem joined the army and moved to a kibbutz. And with his two hands, like so many others, he built a country. He worked with boys who didn't have parents, something he knew about. He met a lovely woman, Chava van Klef, who had come from Cologne. And they married in 1956. They had three children, Jonathan, Michal and Zvi. And now Menachem had something precious and priceless, a loud and happy family where children could be free to run around and yell and be happy, something he never had. But soon after he was married, Menachem Ayah knew he had something to do. He wanted to study. Even though he never graduated from primary or high school, Menachem passed the tests to go straight to a college, first in Haifa, then Jerusalem at the Hebrew University, where he drew himself into the study of the natural sciences. In 1974, he received a master's degree, and at the age of 46, in 1978, Menachem Meyer changed his name one more time when he became Dr. Menachem Meyer. Menachem worked for two years in France in education and he published textbooks for the Israeli Education Ministry. The French government gave him an award. Finally, he represented his country at the UNESCO International Education Conference in Paris in 1995. And Manfred? Manfred said that he wanted to erase all his memories of Germany. He even changed his family name from Maya to Reims. And Manfred became Fred. He joined the U.S. Army and served during the Korean War in the 1950s. He studied aeronautical engineering and worked for Rockwell, California. He was deputy director of Grumman Aircraft. And what did Fred work on? Well, he is one of the early drawings and yes, he became the Apollo Space Shuttle. Fred started his own family. He married Diane. They had two children, Susie and David. But Fred lost Diane in 1993. And this is his second wife, Lydia. Going back to Hoffenheim was not easy. Menachem came first back to Hoffenheim in 1974. And they came together in 1990 and in 1995 they published a book. 
and in 2009 they came back for the premiere of the film that was made about them. Being there meant so much to them. It meant just as much to the young people here. I think that's why when they renovated the old train station in Menachem and Frederick departed from, students of my Arbeit Schweizer school took two stones and created a monument for those deported to Goose. And Menachem and Fred came to dedicate it. When Menachem and Fred spoke about walking through the woods to visit their grandmother in Neidenstein, my soccer colleagues from youth team of TSG Hoffenheim heard about this too. And they created the Menachem and Fred hiking trail. Menachem's wife, Chava, passed away in November 2009 and Fred Rams passed away in 2013, at the age of 84. But Menachem is still very much with us. After all, he has a lot of grandchildren and great-grandchildren to be with. And Menachem also has a precious friend. Her name is Nili. And as for me, Ilan Makais, who is telling you this story, I first learned about Menachem from my teacher, Michelle Heitz. And I saw that documentary film about Menachem and Fred. And that is when it hit me. I am the only Jew who lives around here now. Except for my dad, of course. And I feel just I have to carry a little bit of Menachem and Fred with me. This really is the definition, after all, of Zachor. Remember. And sometimes, when I am home in Israel, I go to see one of the Jewish boys from Hoffenheim. That was my destiny. I cannot say I am lucky that I escaped. What is luck? 